that's my cue to pull the stomach, huh? Thanks for rushing me, guys. <laughs> we still have two minutes. In case you're visiting Your here. Do what? Your clock's slow. Oh, my clock's slow. All right. Well, thank y'all for being here. Are you happy to be here today? Yeah. Woo! I thought I could get y'all right up. I said, are you happy? Are you excited to be in the Lord's house today? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, we get to participate behind the curtain. So we are doing a children's drama this morning, the whole story. So we're a little bit, it's like every Sunday here. It's a little bit different. That was y'all's <laughs> turn to laugh or smile or both. Every Sunday is a little bit different here because of people that you're sitting next to. So, um, you should have a program. Does everybody have a program? Because we have some song lyrics in here, and we're going to, this is not just a sit and observe, this is a stand and participate kind of program. And so we're going to want you to stand and help us sing a couple of songs. We've tried to mark those with asterisks on the front, so I think it's the first one, the fourth one, and the last one. And uh, we want you to stand at that point. I'll prompt you because our choir leader is also conducting our children's drama, so she can't lead you and corral our children. So when I motion for you to stand up, stand up and sing with us. And there's one song we're going to jump in on the tail end, so we're not going to stand at the beginning. So wait for me to... And we'll get some lights on, too, because we're going to get the lights in a minute, and you won't be able to read nothing. So uh, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad we have some first-time visitors and then some, some returning visitors. And so that's amazing. Uh, I hope our folks have made you feel at home. A couple of announcements in the way of housekeeping, and I made some notes so I would not forget. And I've got to buy these guys about five or ten minutes to get set up. Um, <clears throat> we have plenty of masks. So if anybody feels the need or would like a mask, and even if folks come in, they sit a little bit closer than you'd like them to sit to you. Uh, just find somebody, Jeff or Ed here at the back, and they'll be more than happy to bring you a mask um, or whatever we need to do to accommodate. We want you to feel safe. We understand that it's COVID season, and we're trying to leave all that anxiety and craziness outside of the church building. Uh, but if you feel the need or need one, please let us know. Uh, we have plenty. We have hand sanitizer by the gallons. We have micro van if you want to wipe your pew down to keep from touching it or afterwards. Um, so we're, we've tried to do everything we can to make you feel safe. And we want you to know that we're not being reckless and careless, um, but we also want you to know that we, we hold the assembling of ourselves together a top priority here. So thank you for being here. Um, we also had about a dozen or 15 t-shirts printed up <laughs> yesterday. And the people that were at rehearsal yesterday bought them all but four. So there's four shirts on the visitor table out here. I think there are two extra larges and then two double extra larges. So if you would like one of those, just grab one and either give the money to Luann or drop it in the bucket because it's just going in general fund because the church just took care of the bill on the printing of shirts. So, um, and they're good looking shirts. I have one on. Y'all are, are a tough crowd this morning, man. We should have prayed before I started talking. Are y'all alive? Are y'all alive? Thank you, Dan. Are y'all alive? Yes. Angie's alive. Are y'all alive? Yes. Ah, land, y'all are tough today. That's right. Uh, this Wednesday will be trivia night at 6 p.m. Um, we had a good crowd last Wednesday, so this Wednesday, 6 p.m., trivia night. New members class will begin September the 6th. That's a Sunday morning, 10 a.m., and we're try, going to try to resume our Sunday school in some form or fashion. We've not ironed all the wrinkles out yet um, with children and adults and new members and doing that safely. So, But we are going to start September 6th. New members class, if you're interested, show up. We have seven people in queue right now waiting to go through. So uh, if you're interested, just show up on September 6th. And here it goes for... Um, our home folks here, we're going to have a short time of business after the drama and after people leave. And I need at least about 10 of y'all to stay to care because we need a little quorum. I don't want to do it now and I don't want to do it while visitors are in the room. We're just getting a yay or nay on an air conditioning unit for the fellowship hall. Somebody say, Amen. Yeah. Amen. yeah. I'm going to let Angie bring it as a motion. Um, so we're going to have a really short time of business. We just need your yes or no on our quote for an air conditioning unit for a fellowship building so that we can be cool in 2020. All right, are y'all ready behind the curtain? Amen. 
Man, I'm catching from both sides today. I'm trying to help you, Miss Linda. All right, well, let me pray for us, and uh, then we're going to kill the lights again. Um, pay attention to your program when the lights come on. I motion stand up, sing with us, sit down, enjoy the show. And this is God's Word after that. We're reading through God's Word chronologically. We've made it almost to Ezekiel. So um, what you're going to see this morning is basically the Old Testament dramatized, presented in song, the gospel, and, of course, the resurrection is the best part. But anyway, let me pray for us, and y'all enjoy what Miss Linda and the crew has done here. Father, we thank you. We love you. We praise you that we serve a God who is on time every time. We serve a God who is alive and well. We serve a God who sees us in the midst of our troubles, our trials, and our chaos. Lord, in our disorganized lives. Lord, in our anxiety and our depression and our excitement and our joy. Lord, in times of death and in seasons of sorrow, you see us. You're with us. You know where we're at. You know exactly what we're into. And you have done what you have always done and sent us a fresh word from heaven. Today, God, I pray that we would receive that word from these children. Lord, if we would understand that, Lord, you've been with us and you've had us in mind since creation and even before creation. And even when we fail and mess things up with our sin, you're still with us and willing to forgive us and inviting us to come back into a right relationship with you, Lord. And after you make promises and covenants with us and we break our side, you never break yours because you're always faithful. And Lord, you love us so much that you sent us your only son. Today, we pray that we'd make much of the name of Jesus. Lord, and that our music, our worship, our actions, our speech, our service, and our worship would be pointed directly to King Jesus. Lord, pray that today he would receive all glory, all honor, and all praise because he alone is worthy. And we pray in that strong and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness covered the surface of the watery depths. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and he called the darkness night. Evening came, and then morning, the first day. Then God said, let there be an expanse between the waters, separating water from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water above the expanse. And it was so. God called the expanse sky. Evening came and then morning, the second day. Then God said, let the earth produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and fruit trees on the earth, bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And it was so. The earth produced vegetation, seed-bearing plants according to their kinds. And trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kind. And God saw that it was good. Evening came, and then morning, the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night. They will serve as signs for festivals and for days and for years. They will be lights in the expanse of the sky to provide light on the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to have dominion over the day and the lesser light to have dominion over the night, as well as the stars. God placed them in the expanse of the sky to provide light on the earth, to dominate the day and the night, 
and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. Evening came, and then morning, the fourth day. Then God said, Let the water swarm with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the large sea creatures. And every living creature that moves and swarms in the water according to their kind, he also created every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So God blessed them. Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the waters of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and then morning, the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth produce living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, creatures that crawl, and the wildlife of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. So God made the wildlife of the earth according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and creatures that crawl on the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. They will rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, all the earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God created man in his own image. He created them male and female. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. Evening came, and then morning, the sixth day. So the heavens and the earth and everything in them were completed. By the seventh day, God created his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. Take note that everything God had made was good and perfect.
matters. It's about us. said to the serpent, We may eat from the fruit of the trees in the garden, but from the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, You must not eat it or touch it, or you will die. No, you will not die, the serpent said to the woman. In fact, God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God knowing good and evil. Then the woman saw that the tree was good for food and delightful to look at and that it was desirable for obtaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. Notice that man tries to cover up his wrongs, but God always knows where man is and what he is into. Only God can cover our wrongs. Adam names his wife Eve because she was the mother of all the living. The Lord God made clothing out of skins for Adam and his wife, and he clothed them.
see God making promise after promise with people to call them back into a right relationship with their Creator God. So God said to Noah, I have decided to put an end to every creature, for the earth is filled with wickedness because of them. Therefore, I am going to destroy them along with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it with pitch inside and outside. This is how you are to make it. The ark will be 450 feet long. 75 feet wide and 45 feet high. You are to make a roof finishing the sides of the ark to within 18 inches of the roof. You are to put a door in the side of the ark. Make it with lower, middle, and upper decks. Understand that I am bringing a flood. Flood waters on the earth to destroy every creature under heaven with the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will die. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark with your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives. You are also to bring into the ark two of all the living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of everything, from the birds according to their kind, the livestock according to their kind, and from the animals that crawl on the ground according to their kinds. They will come to you so that you can keep them alive. Take with you every kind of food that is eaten. Gather it as food for you and for them. And Noah did all these things. He did everything that God had commanded him. Then Abram fell face down, and God spoke with him. As for me, my covenant is with you. You will become a many nations. Your name will no longer be Abram, but your name will be Abraham. For I will make you the father of many nations, and kings come from you. I will keep my covenant between me and you, and your future offspring throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant to be your God and the God of your offspring after you. And to you and your future offspring, I will give the land where you are residing, all the land of Canaan, at an eternal possession. I will be their God. execute judgments against all the gods of Egypt. The blood on the houses where you are staying will be a distinguishing mark for you. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. No plague will come among you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. 
believe what we have heard? And who has the arm of the Lord been revealed to? He grew up for him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He didn't have an impressive form or majesty that we should look at him, no appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of suffering who knew what sickness was. He was like someone people turned away from. He was despised and didn't value him. Yet he himself bore our sicknesses, and he carried our pains. But we, in turn, regarded him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced because of our transgressions, crushed because of our iniquities, punished, for our peace was on him, and we are healed by his wounds. We all went astray like sheep. We all have turned to our own way, and God has punished him for the iniquities of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, like a sheep silent before her shearers, he did not open his mouth. He was taken away because of oppression and judgment, and who considered his fate? For he was cut off from the land of the living. He was struck because of my people's rebellion. They made his grave with the wicked and with the rich man at his death. Although he had done no violence, and had not spoken deceitfully, yet the Lord was pleased to crush him severely. When you make him a restitution offering, he will see his seed, he will prolong his days, and by his hand the Lord's pleasure will be accomplished. He will see it out of his anguish, and he will be satisfied with his knowledge. My righteous servant will justify many, and he will carry their iniquities. Therefore, I give him the many as a portion, and he will receive the might as spoil. Because he submitted himself to death and was counted among the rebels, yet he bore the sin of many and interceded for the rebels. Because man is sinful and can never live up to God's standard, God would soon send the ultimate sacrifice that would accomplish what the blood of bulls and goats never could, the forgiveness of sins.
Shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at flock over their flock. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today a Savior, who is Messiah the Lord, was born for you in the city of David. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a feeding trough. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. But John tried to stop him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and yet you come to me? Jesus answered him, Allow it for now, because this is the way for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him to be baptized. After Jesus was baptized, he went up immediately from the water. The heavens suddenly opened for him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove coming down on him. And there came a voice from heaven, This is my beloved Son. I take delight in him. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. Then the tempter approached him and said, You are the Son of God. Tell these stones to become bread. But he answered, It is written, Man must not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. You've heard about the events that took place throughout Judea, beginning from Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good, healing all who were under the tyranny of the devil, because God was with him. which is called Passover, was drawing near. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put him to death because they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas, called Israel, who was numbered among the twelve. He went away and discussed with the chief priest and the temple police how he could hand him over to them. They were glad and agreed to give him a prison. So he accepted the offer and started looking for a good opportunity to betray him to them when the crowd were not present.
When daybreak came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people plotted against Jesus to put him to death. After tying him up, they led him away and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, was full of remorse and wanted to return the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. I have sinned by betraying innocent blood, he said. What's that to us, they said. See to it yourself. So he threw the silver into the sanctuary and departed. Then he went out and hanged himself. The chief priest took the silver and said, It is not lawful to put it into the temple treasury, since it is blood money. So they conferred together and bought the potter's field with it as a burial place for foreigners. Therefore, that field has been called the blood field to this day. Then what was spoken through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. They took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of him whose price was set by the Israelites, and they gave it for the potter's field as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor. Are you the king of the Jews? The governor asked him. Jesus answered, you have said it. And while he was being accused by the chief priests and elders, he didn't answer. Then Pilate said to him, don't you hear how much they are testifying against you? But he didn't answer him on even one charge. So that the governor was greatly amazed. At the festival, the governor's custom was to release to the crowd a prisoner that the crowd would call for. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered together, Pilate said to them, Who is it that you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Messiah? For he knew that they had handed him over because of envy. While he was sitting on the judge's bench, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that righteous man, for today I have suffered terribly in a dream because of him. The chief priests and the elders, however, persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to execute Jesus. The governor said and asked them, which of the two do you want me to release to you? And, and, and execute Jesus? The governor asked. They answered him all the more. Pilate asked, what should I do with Jesus, who is called Messiah? And they all answered, crucify him. Crucify him. Then he said, why? What has he done wrong? But they kept shouting, My strength. 
Participating along with us, singing along with us. I know some of those songs were fairly familiar, some were not. Thank you for being a good sport. Thank you for supporting our kids. And if you'll take a look on the back here, we've tried to shout out to the folks that made this happen. And I know there are a lot more involved, but some of the folks behind the scenes. We have a receiving line for our kids. Y'all want to line them up it's kind of out the door or whatever works so that people can kind of file out without too much. Uh, jumbling together we're going to try to respect your distance and uh, your space but please do go by and congratulate these kids they have done an awesome job and miss linda and miss Britt farrell and clay and uh, miss debbie and angie and mike and man there's a whole group of people that made this thing come together and work and so thank you church thank you for supporting i, I think they did a great job portraying from the creation the fall the promise of God, the birth of God the Son, the crucifixion of God the Son, and the resurrection yeah. of the living King, Amen. and his name is Jesus. Yeah. And so I hope today that you've been challenged in your heart and mind simply by the hearing of God's word yeah. and the dramatizing of it by these children. I hope it cuts you to the core. And if you need to call me, text me, email me, you've got my information. If you don't, grab a business card on your way out. Please find somebody you don't know in the park lot or outside and make them feel welcome. And I love you, church. Thank you for coming. Again, short time of business after you make our visitors feel welcome and shake our kids. How about giving a round of applause for everybody? Yeah. You are dismissed. You are dismissed. Thank y'all. You are dismissed. Shake a kid's hand. Tell them they did a great